Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 9 primary weapon, the Phantasma. I'm gonna be covering a cheap build, something affordable that anybody can build, but of course we also have the classic end game setup with a Riven. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides follow a new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of this stuff, then please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Phantasma. Let's begin by having a look at how the weapon behaves without any mods equipped. And for that I'm gonna need a couple of targets and some clarifications regarding the Phantasma. This is a beam automatic shotgun with a range of 20 meters. By default it will fire 5 beams and the status chance does get divided among those 5 beams. However, there's also some good news. As you can see, it acts like the Ignis Wraith, as in it will pass through all of the targets within its 20 meter range, and that is absolutely huge. No need to build punch through unless you want to shoot through walls. You also have a secondary fire. If you tap alt fire, you're gonna be launching a plasma bomb. The plasma bomb will deal damage on impact and it will also do a 5 meter area explosion which will deal radiation damage. Now, you can either tap it, which will consume 2 ammo minimum, or you can charge it to the full extent of your magazine. For example, like so. It will deal more damage and increase the number of little bomblets you get from the explosion. Normally you get like with no mods on, I think you get two maximum free little bomblets which will seek out targets. This one, yes, functions similarly to how the Tsar's primary fire functions, however the little bomblets are a lot more efficient at hunting down targets. The Tsar's little bomblets are a bit heavy and they crawl on the ground, these guys fly up into the air, then look for headshots. You don't even need to hit a target with the explosion, for example like so. You see, they go up into the air and then they go looking for targets. The little bomblets act kinda like the primary explosion. They have impact damage and they have explosion damage as well. And that matters when you're taking into account sources of applying status. So keep that one in mind. Also, since you're only limited by your magazine capacity, if you want to make a cheese build with the biggest explosion you can, you can build magazine size and you can simply charge for 30 shots, something like that, you're gonna get a huge explosion and a lot of little bomblets. Once again, uh, increasing the charge on the weapon will increase the damage of the initial uh, explosion, also increase the number of little bomblets. Let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. First of all, mod capacity is 60 out of 60. And if your Phantasma only has 30 out of 30, then jump into actions and install an Auto King Catalyst. The Catalyst can be found from alerts, invasions, or if you're lucky, from the daily sortie. As an alternative measure, you can pay 20 plat to have this one plugged in. Next, my weapon has been formatted a total of 4 times, but this was done only for the purpose of testing. For the weapon build, I'm recommending you guys, one maximum of 2 forma will do it. That is because the Phantasma by default does come with two polarities, a V or Madurai and a Dash or Naramon. The accuracy for the Phantasma is 100 for both primary and secondary, which is absolutely awesome. But if I was to add a mod that decreases that accuracy, Vicious Spread for example, which is an extremely uh, popular shotgun mod, 90% damage and 60% spread, that is a negative, it nukes the accuracy to 3.2, which is absolutely horrible, let me show you in gameplay how this one works, it makes that pinpoint accurate beam into a broom effect of sorts, which is useful when it comes to lower level content, but let's say this is a reasonable gameplay distance away from my target, you will see that 2 out of the 5 default beams are not hitting my target, and that is a bit of an issue. Also, Vicious Spread will affect your alternative fire as well. Not so much the default projectile, but as soon as you add multi-shot, you will notice that the plasma bombs will be getting all sorts of weird uh, trajectories. I'm talking about the plasma balls resulting from multi-shot. So, for those reasons, I am not recommending Vicious Spread on the Phantasma. Critical chance is 3% with a crit multiplier of 1.5. The base crit chance is abysmal, so I'm not gonna be recommending you go further into crit chance and crit damage unless you take into account Warframe synergies such as Harrow. Fire rate of 12 with a magazine of 11 and a reload of 0.5. The reload is lightning quick, but it does get annoying sometimes reloading all the time. For example, when you're just about to kill a target and it reloads. Again, it's gonna depend from player to player, I find it just a little bit annoying. The weapon only has one major issue, it guzzles ammo like nobody's business. We will have to address the ammo issue one of three ways. First, the one I don't like, 
Shotgun ammo mutation. This will solve your ammo issues entirely. Unfortunately, it comes at a cost of a mod slot and I do not recommend this approach. Here's a more, well, elegant approach. Carrier or carrier prime. It doesn't really matter which of the two because they will give you access to ammo case which will solve your ammo issues entirely. And the third option would be to go for ammo pads. If you want to use consumables, by all means, go for ammo pads. Riven Disposition is 3 out of 5, right smack in the middle. This is normal when it comes to new weapons, brand new weapons, not prime weapons. When they release prime weapons, they take the Riven Disposition of the existing normal counterpart. That is how the T-Baron Prime happened. Status chance is 37% by default, which is huge. That means that we're gonna be able to get to a true 100% status chance with the free 60-60 mods. We don't have to use all four, that's the thing. Keep in mind that multi-shot on beam weapons such as the Phantasma will not increase the shot status chance. For example, I can add Hell's Chamber and the status chance did not budge. When it comes to the default damage, we got impact, I don't know why we do, but we do have impact, and radiation damage for both the primary and secondary fire. You'll notice that the damage is pretty similar between the fire modes, however, this is sorely incomplete. It doesn't tell you the damage of the bomb blitz, it doesn't tell you the damage is this charged, is this not charged, how many ammo was consumed in this. Unfortunately, the information is not fully here. I expect this to be just for two ammo, once again, the one tap approach. The impact represents the projectile hitting the target and the radiation of course is the explosion. By default on the Phantasma we have an elemental combo, radiation, heat plus electricity. If I want to increase that radiation I'm gonna have to recreate the elemental combo within the weapon. Adding only one of the two elements will not add to it. For example if I was just to add electricity it's left hanging all on its own. So I'm gonna need more heat something like Scattering Inferno for example, and now it does get combined into the radiation. That being said, let's start slapping on some mods starting with mandatory mods and there's nothing more mandatory than damage. Point blank, 100% mandatory and you can also go for Blaze which will add 60% damage and 60% heat. Blaze is a terrific shotgun mod, extremely powerful, pound for pound it adds a ton of damage. For now, we're gonna leave it alone and I'm gonna explain why that is just a tad later. Next we're gonna go into multi-shot, we already know that uh, it doesn't increase our status chance and you can also pick up Vigilante armaments for additional 60% multi-shot. What does multi-shot do in the case of the Phantasma anyway? Let's leave uh, Vigilante armaments alone for now. 120% multi-shot will mean that for primary fire I'm gonna be getting 11 beams up from 5 beams and for secondary fire I have a guaranteed second uh, bomb and a 20% chance at a third bomb. So that is pretty huge. You will see that when it comes to multi-shot it's extremely impactful for both secondary and primary fire. Next we're gonna go into elemental damage and I want to get my true status chance of 100%. So we're gonna need 3 of the 60, 60 mods. Which of the free 60 60 mods you add will be dependent on your circumstances. I'm going to be going up against Grenier, which have two armor types, Alloy, which is weak to radiation damage, which I already have on the weapon, and Ferrite, which is weak to corrosive damage, which is what I'm gonna be building. Against Grenier, more often than not, your best approach will be through corrosive, which on a status proc will be chopping away at their armor. And again, I'm going for 100% status chance. Corrosive is the elemental combo of electricity together with Toxin, the two 60-60 mods, Toxic Barrage and Shell Shock. From the entire build I'm recommending you guys, Shell Shock is the only quote unquote problem. It can be farmed from the game. The mission is called Na'elgar on the planet Eris. You'll have to find all the free secret caches, then upon extraction you got a 5% chance of getting this one or high voltage, which is the exact same thing only for rifles, bows, etc, etc. It's more than worth the farm, however, it is pretty hard to farm it, it takes a while to complete a mission and find the caches, etc, so you might want to hit up the trade chat. This one currently on PC is going for about 40 to 50 plat, check Warframe Market for more appropriate prices. Very well, I have made Corrosive, but I still don't have my true 100% status chance. 81.4 means I'm still gonna be getting divided by 11 now, since I got 11 beams. So I need one more 60-60 mod, and once again, add accordingly to your own circumstances. In my case, I'm gonna go with Heat, Scattering Inferno, 60% status chance, and 60% Heat. Now I finally got my true 100% status chance, no matter of how many beams I am firing at the target. Next, I'm gonna recommend you increase your elemental combos, once again, depending on who exactly are you fighting. In my case, I want more corrosive. I want my corrosive 
to be the number one prio when it comes to status procs now that I finally got my 100%. So I'm going to be adding more electricity and more toxin to the weapon with charge shell and contagious spread. The 90 mods. 924 corrosive. Now let's pause for a second and remember how status procs work in Warframe. Keep in mind that impact, puncture and slash the physical types have a 4 times greater chance of proccing over elemental types such as heat, radiation or corrosive. So when you're looking at the impact, try to see it visually as times 4 just so you can get a clear understanding of where it is in the proc picking priority. So in my case, corrosive number 1 followed by impact which in fact is about 409 or whatever else then radiation and heat this is going to be the base build i'm recommending to you guys and the last mod is your option i'm going to highlight a couple of worthy options if you were to decrease the reload time let's say which is already 0 0.5 see what happens let's see reload speed Tactical pump, 30% reload speed, it goes to only 0.4 from 0.5. That is because the reload speed is extremely quick as it is a very small number. So modifying it with percentage base increases or decreases will have a very small impact on the number. So keep that one in mind. Chilling reload as well, this will add some damage as well. This is like the probably the ideal shotgun reload mod. But also this one doesn't have that big of an effect also to 0 0.4 and it also adds coal to the weapon which will get combined with the heat and create blast damage and nobody really wants that let's be serious another way you can go with is with magazine size throughout my testing with the weapon day in and day out the one commodity stat or utility stat was magazine capacity this one had the biggest impact i could reload less often and the weapon was just a tad less annoying. Ammo stock 60% magazine capacity, but the magazine will give you the same amount but at the cost of reload speed. And speaking of that cheese build, you can use both of them to make one big boom and a lot of little bomblets as well. Now I know you guys want more damage, here's a couple of options. Blaze. Blaze is like I said before fantastic shotgun mod. The problem with Blaze in this specific case is the fact that it will increase the value of my heat which yes does mean more damage but it also increases its proc priority, its chance to proc. So keep that one in mind. Here's another option you can go for, it's called Vigilante Armaments and it'll add 60% multi shot. Now hold on I want you to keep an eye on the differences between the two. Multi. The damage goes down on all fronts. I got less impact, which I don't really care about. A lot less heat because this one had 60% heat on top of the damage. A uh, bit less radiation and a bit less corrosive as well. So you might be tempted to go immediately for blaze. Just keep in mind what this means for the secondary fire. If I just leave Hell's Chamber on, I only got a 20% chance at a third bomb. If I put on Vigilante Armaments with 60% multi-shot, I'm gonna get an 80% chance at a third bomb. So think about all these aspects when trying to pick your mod. Do you care about the alternative fire? Do you want to build it only for alternative fire or you simply don't care? My recommendation is either of the two, once again, depending on your preference. The differences in damage are honestly minute, it doesn't really matter all that much. Spawning in Corrupted Heavy Gunner level 120 and it's finally time for our first test. Don't worry about my carrier, he does not have a weapon. And of course we're gonna go for flat headshot. You're gonna see I'm going to be getting a lot of procs on the target. Per each ammo I am procking two times basically because there's two damage ticks per, um, per ammo. And you saw there I overstripped a little bit which is why another good idea to pick up blaze. In this case again more heat procs will mean less corrosive procs therefore less chance at an overstrip. And as you can see, this weapon is a bloody monster, are you kidding me? MR9, only normal mods and it can do that? Absolutely bloody glorious. It's so easy to reach the 100% through status chance with this one, which gives us a little bit of leeway, a little bit of option when it comes to the rest of the mods. Now let's have a quick go at the secondary fire, the big big bombs, and I'm simply going to be standing on this pillar over here while I rain death and destruction upon this corrupted heavy gunner. And you will see a ton of little ticks once again, those are the little bomblets which consistently seem to find their target, and to me that is truly impressive. Plenty of armor strip like this because again you are getting a ton of hits on the target with your primary and with your secondary fire, and that to me is truly impressive. Very well, that's it for the standard build I'm gonna be recommending to you guys. Once again, you do have an option in this build, cater each and every build to your individual playstyle. This is just the baseline I am recommending to you guys. 
Now, let's have a talk about Riven setups and Riven mods. I'm gonna slap on Prime Point Blank, of course, instead of the normal version, and you will see that I have three Riven mods for this one. I have tested a total of, I don't know, seven Riven mods for this one, trying to determine exactly what would be the ideal stats. Although, considering when you have this much power, it doesn't really matter all that much anymore. My recommendation to you guys, as far as the Riven goes, would be damage, multi-shot, status chance, and a negative of IPS, negative impact, puncture or slash for example this one this one will have magazine capacity damage status chance and minus puncture the minus puncture is 100 percent harmless because there is no puncture on the weapon here's another good negative minus impact now if i go for minus impact it reduces the chance of impact at proccing. Yes, it does take away a little bit of the damage, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's much more important that it takes impact uh, off the proc pecking list. Well, it doesn't fully take it off. You still got 6.2. Unfortunately, this couldn't be a 100%, but there you go. Also, you can get mods such as this one. This is a double positive with a negative. You got a lot of status chance on this one, 114%. Depending on how much status chance you get on your Riven, you're going to be able to drop one or two 60-60 mods, which again gives you a whole lot more leeway when picking your option mods. So keep that one in mind. I'm going to show it to you guys with this one. This one is actually mine. I rolled it 34 times. Thank you very much, my dear clan mates, for helping me get this one. Currently, these things are bloody expensive as all hell. So we're going to be testing the weapon out like this. You're going to see one heck of a difference from a dispo free. I drop one of the 60-60 mods, the heat one, of course. Basically, I have no more heat on the weapon. I drop the 60-60 for heat. I'm not running blades. I'm, run I'm running vigilante armaments. So I'm not proccing heat anymore. I'm proccing a lot more corrosive. As you can see, in a single clip, I managed to tear through those targets. And again, the uh, default punch rule. I call it default, default punch rule, but it's not really punch rule when it comes to this type of weapon. Absolutely nuking the target. I don't think you need any more convincing. This is an outstanding weapon and I highly recommend it. When it comes to Riven mods, now you should know the exact priority you should be following. If you're getting magazine capacity, that is not a waste, definitely. When it comes to usability, from my point of view, magazine capacity has the highest impact on the weapon. So keep that one in mind. One more test. This time we're going to be using the secondary fire and of course respawn the exact same targets from up on high, death and destruction. Now that is truly remarkable. <laughs> Look at that. All of the blitz. I just love all of the little bomb that's like finding the targets and the targets just like getting ticked all over the place and knocked around. They are getting knocked around because you are going to be getting some impact procs. Again, not a lot of oh wow, that, that's just that's just beautiful. Did I tell you to pick up this weapon? Just pick up this weapon. Now of course there's one more thing to do, pump up everything with Warframe buffs, and for that I'm gonna need my weapon specialist Mirage Prime. And we're gonna check out her buffs in a second, but first fashion frame, there we go, much better. As an aura, we're gonna be using whatever aura you want. You do have the option of shotgun amp as an aura. The problem I take with shotgun amp is the fact that it only gives you 18% extra damage to shotguns. That's honestly not that big of a deal. It is stackable, however, and of course everybody in your party will be receiving this benefit. In my case, Rifle Amp, of course, will grant me absolutely nothing, so I can go with something like Corrosive Projection, which will reduce the armor of enemies. When you're fighting Grenier, this is the best option you can go for. However, the Amp Auras will grant their benefit regardless of the target, so keep that one in mind. When it comes to Arcanes, let's talk about Arcane Rage R3, farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. On headshot, 10% chance for plus 100 and 20% damage to rifles for 16 seconds. While this arcane may claim that it only gives the bonus to rifles, in actuality it gives it to every primary weapon in the game. Well, actually, almost every primary weapon in the game. Head up the wiki, the official text for this one is 120% damage to primary weapons. So keep that one in mind. When it comes to your second arcane, I guess you can go for something like Arcane Tempo, which will give you fire rate to shotguns. Unfortunately, it's on critical hit and we don't really crit all that much with the weapon. The fire rate as it is, is really nice. If you get a Riven with fire rate, that will mean you're going to be deleting your targets a whole lot faster. So it is an option. You can also go for Arcane Avenger. Now this one, undamaged, 
14% chance for 30% crit chance for 8 seconds. Keep in mind that Arcane Avenger is a bonus additive after, meaning that if you have a weapon with 0% chance to crit and this one pops, that weapon is going to be going to 30% chance to crit. So in this case, it's going to work quite nicely. If not, use your Arcane Barrier, Energize, whatever you guys prefer to use. Very well, let's test the weapon out like this. Once again, we're gonna be respawning the exact same targets, only this time I'm going to be unpausing the AI. Oh, before I do that, before I forget, careful, the alternative fire of the Phantasma will kill you. Like so. So, yeah, there is that to take into account. Now to turn on invincibility and spawn those targets. One more time, Corrupted Heavy Gunner level 120 and of course Mirage's further ability for a massive damage increase as well as her clones. And this time, let's start off with a big old bang. Wow, that is a lot of damage. You will see fatalities left and right. Keep in mind that because of the Riven has extra mag capacity, I am able to charge a whole lot more. Therefore, more little uh, bomblets and more uh, a more bigger explosion as well. Now let's try it with the primary fire, but as you saw there, it is capable of my favorite magic trick of now you see him, now you don't, but I'm fully aware that most of you guys are simply going to be using the weapon like this, and this is how I use it as well, using the primary fire. However, when I am confident I can finish off a target with the secondary fire, I do so, and that's what I recommend to you guys as well. And that's pretty much gonna do it for the review. As always, my name is Blazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. I can't realistically promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week because these reviews normally take quite a bit of time. But you can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.